through society. And precisely because it's a multi-faith society, it's important that children know each other and, 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 and interact together. And does that, in, in, in your view, apply to all faith schools? Yes, across the board. Uh, I mean, for me, faith should come from the home. Schools should be cross-community, uh, where they, they, they teach about faith uh, and, and you learn about each other's history and culture. But the actual indoctrination should come from the home or from weekend schools. Schools should be where you build bridges, uh, not direct barriers. And I, and I say this from a religious point of view, because I strongly believe, as many as the other two faiths believe, that you should love your neighbour as yourself. But you can only love your neighbour if you know your neighbour. So it's very important to interact with Respond to what the rabbi said. Oh, well, I mean, I think that, uh, that there's a very real place for, um, in faith schools, that there must be a, a, a range of, of, of people who are able to join those schools. And in the tradition of the Church of England, for example, in certain parts of, of the United Kingdom, there are more Muslims in our schools than there are Christians in our schools. Now, it's a very small number, I grant you, but equally, we work on the principle that, 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 that there will always be the possibility and, and the reality of other faiths being part of those schools. What about the point that the rabbi is making that actually you don't under... You, by, almost by definition, because you are, generally speaking, not if not entirely exclusive, broadly, predominantly, you're teaching one faith, or it, the framework is for one faith, and that that itself is divis divisive? Well, um, I, I make no apology for the fact that we, we have a history of being a Christian nation. Um, uh, from the perspective of the Church of England. For OK, the, all let, me bring, let me bring the rabbi in on that. You make no apology for that fact, and it's perfectly valid and, 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 and not divisive because you have other, other faiths it's at the It's a school. totally disingenuous point. I mean, most faith schools are exclusively Jewish, Muslim, Sikh, whatever. And um, it's a religious apartheid society we're creating. I mean, I deliberately sent my children to a normal cross-communal school because I wanted them to sit next to a Christian, uh, play football with a Muslim, do homework with a Hindu, and walk home with a secularist. And that way, so, that way we will not fragment society. Richard Dawkins, you want to hear? So many of the panel have referred to things like Catholic children, Muslim children. There is no such thing as a Catholic child, no such thing as a Muslim child, at least not young ones. They are too young to know what they are. That's the point I was trying to, to make earlier. Let me just earlier. then pick up... Do, do, you, do, you, do you reject that? If, if, a ch if a child happens to be born of Catholic or Jewish or other parents, are they by definition, in your view, Church of England? Well, I think, I think, it's a, I think this is a very important point that Richard is making. If you are Jewish... Um, that is an integral part of being a culture. I believe that to be true of being Muslim and Sikh too. My understanding uh, in general terms of being Christian is that choice is much more likely to come into play at some point. Okay, however, let me, let me, however let me, let me, if you are baptised yeah. as a Christian by your parents... Even if you don't have choice in the matter. Yeah, even if you don't have choice in the matter, at that point, you are regarded as a Christian. Mm. OK, let's pick up on the... Uh, uh, Richard, on the, on the, on the case of um, Muslims and Jews, which uh, the, Arch the bishop has just said, you are actually culturally, by definition, um, uh, you belong to that culture, and that is you're defined in that way, and the school is reinforcing your culture. When you have faith schools, it does seem to me, talking about a Catholic child or, or an Anglican child, uh, you really are making an assumption which is presumptuous and is, I think, wicked. Uh, I, I, I don't think you can get out of it by just saying, oh, it's a, it's a cultural matter. It isn't a cultural matter. You're being taught doctrine. You're being taught doctrine as your doctrine, as opposed to that other child's doctrine in a different in a different school. That seems to me to be wicked. No, Thank no, you. No, and no, I'm, no, going, no. I'm going to have to. I, going to we, we, I'm sure we'll touch on some of this uh, in a moment again. But um, Dr. Romain, thank you very much indeed. <coughs> um, our next witness is Dr. Mohammed Mukadam. Dr. Mukadam is chair of the Association of Muslim Schools and the principal of Madani High School in Leicester. You want to see more Muslim schools, regardless of the impact that the rabbi says they have on social cohesion. Well, first of all, uh, with respect to the rabbi, I don't think he's looked at the facts and figures in making those comments. When you talk about community cohesion, if you look and compare like with like, children, young, ch young children, adults coming out of faith schools are far more likely to integrate, participate, go on to further education, higher education, and those are the facts. I'm going to bring in on that Barry Shimon. What's your reaction to that? Actually, you're dead wrong. 
Uh, well, I don't believe that they are the facts. You can announce they're the facts, but I, 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 my, the business I do as a chairman of the select committee is to try and discover the facts. I certainly haven't seen those facts. I worry because I think if we started from you know, anew, we wouldn't have faith schools because what we are finding in our big centres of population in this country, we are finding division. Dr McAdam. With respect, and if people go, uh, take the efforts to go and see Muslim kids in faith schools and when they go into further and higher education, They'll see for themselves. I mean, I think it would be important if the government could uh, carry out a large-scale uh, research, you know, to find out what the facts are, rather than have this ideological and sometimes very prejudicial debate about what do, do, the do, faith do, schools do, are. Is the chairman of the select committee being ideological in, in, in this? Well, I don't think he's got the facts as he claims he has, because I run uh, Muslim schools. But how do I'm you... I'm the chairman of the Muslim schools, and I do how, visit... How do, you, how do you know that when your pupils go out into the, into the world, they are more integrated into the broader community than those Muslims who go to a comprehensive school which doesn't uh, uh, specifically have the Muslim faith in Well, I can them. stand here all night and give you lots of examples, but let me just you give you one but example. But that's just let as anecdotal just... as his evidence. That's the problem, well, isn't it? Well, right. It is Very anecdotal, and the reason is because there isn't a wholesale or, or big uh, research carried out, and it's important that the government does do that so that we can put this to bed once and for all. As Muslims, we have a right to bring up our children in accordance with our beliefs, which have served us over the centuries well. Now, I'll give you the same right to bring up your children in the way that you want. What about the rights of the children themselves? Well, the rights of the children come when, uh, when they are uh, as is, uh, they're old enough to understand the issues. Until they get to that age, it's the parents' responsibility and, and duty. Do you teach if them you that Pakistan should that. be punished? You may not share that, but that is my religion. That is the way I've been brought up. And I, have, I bring that child into this world. I educate him. I give him everything. It's my right to make sure that I bring him. And I, I take issue with that. You think that it's wicked. Well, that's your point of view. I know that's going to make him a better human being. And what's missing is when you talk about faith, you don't look at what faith teaches. First and foremost, what faith teaches is that, listen, you're a human being, so respect your fellow human beings. And I think that's an important point that you don't want to discuss. What is the penalty for apostasy? And that is the apostasy? thing that you fail to discuss, and that's why you've got those prejudicial views about faith. With what respect. is the penalty for apostasy? What do you teach the children will happen to them if they give up the Muslim faith? Well, let's bring Can the I... debate back into Britain. What is the and penalty for apostasy? I'll tell you what we will do, because I, I, we could go down this road a very long way, and it's obviously a very important issue. But I want to bring in some of our audience and those who have first hand experience. Um, <coughs> Nadja, you are Muslim, yeah. um, but you don't go to a Muslim school. No. Are you better off as a result or worse off? Um, to be honest, personally, I think I'm better off because I have an experience of different faiths, different people, and people who I wouldn't have met if I had gone to a Muslim school you know, or, or a single faith, single sex school. I wouldn't have met a Rastafarian. I wouldn't have met a Jew or a Buddhist. And when I come across, when I speak to them, they have their views and I have mine, and um, I wouldn't have the skills I have to talk to different people about different issues. H have you got friends who are Muslim who are at exclusively Muslim schools? Yeah, I have. Uh, do you think they suffer or do they feel they, I mean, is, is there some way in which they are uh, missing I think, something? I think when um, they lack confidence in like public speaking, but I don't think I can say, oh, that's because they go to a Muslim school. But I also find that they either become very practicing, very devout Muslim, or the complete opposite and just reject the faith because it's been so hounded in them, com you know, completely from, from being child and going to school. It's constantly being Muslim, do this, you can't do this, you can't do this. However, I think that is because of the way it's been taught, not because of the Muslim school, because of the religion itself. I think that because the, the, you'll find most Muslim schools, especially in Bradford, are more cultural and they're not so much Islamic. Because you'll find that a lot of the things they get taught are come from their cultural background and the, most of the time it is a Pakistani thing, from a Pakistani background, and that is what affects them more than the actual religion. Very interesting. I bring in now Sinead. Um, you are um, at a Catholic school. Yeah. Do you feel yourself to be integrated at a Catholic school or do you feel that you are in some way isolated from other faiths or, or non-faiths in a way that is not helpful? Not at all, because um, 
I've, I've always been to, gone to a Catholic school, and I think that as a young person, being around other Catholics has developed my faith and um, given me my own principles, morals, and beliefs, which I think is a great thing for me. And I don't think like and part of the Catholic teaching has actually made me like more tolerant towards other religions, which you know the Catholic faith does teach you to be um, civil to one another.